Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24, France 24's tech show. In this edition, we tell you how designers and scientists are developing high-tech and sustainable textiles, finding inspiration in nature, and anticipating the needs of the space age. And in Test24, we tried the Polaroid Lab, a three-lens system that turns your digital photos into instant Polaroid pictures. Now you have until February 23rd to catch London's Design Museum exhibit, Moving to Mars, a show that explores how sending humans on the red planet is not only a new frontier for science, but also for design. The exhibit showcases idea of what habitats could look like on Mars, but also what kind of clothes we would have to wear in such a hostile environment. Yuka Royer has the story. It looks like a sci-fi movie set from the 70s, but designers were dead serious when they came up with these prototypes of things you might need to survive on Mars. On Earth, we have a magnetosphere, so the radiation from space and from the sun gets deflected. On Mars, is magnetically dead, which means radiation hits the surface. Whenever we live on Mars, we need to cover ourselves with a protection shield. Among the futuristic items on display, a classic sewing machine. It's there for a reason. Uh, you've got an absolutely limited amount of resource. There is no restock coming. You can't pop out to the shops and go and get something. So can you actually, uh, can you um, reuse something? Can, is it available to repair? These clothes are made with NASA-developed insulating material. The idea is for space travelers to recycle their parachutes and other fabric and make the most out of what they have to protect them from radiation and Martian dust. Designers here say that the creativity driven by space missions can also have an impact on our planet. Everything that we learn uh, to get to Mars, all of the technology and knowledge that we'll need to build up to make that mission possible, has very direct Earth applications uh, that we need today. The European Space Agency is preparing to send its exploring rover to Mars. As scientists are on the race to send humans to the Red Planet, apparel designers and others are also keen to jump on the bandwagon. And let's now welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Hedelkar. Hello, Dan. Hello, Julia. So the latest ins inspiration for making a smart textiles actually comes from the banana plant. Well, that's right. Uh, the technical fabric is called banana text, and it's made from a variety of a banana plant which uh, grows in the Philippines. It's called abaca. So you extract fibers from these plants, then you press them uh, into sheets. They are then soaked into water. Then you make thin paper uh, rolls out of it, and then these thin paper rolls are cut into small strips, and then a fine yarn is uh, woven out of it. And in this process, uh, the company, it's a Swiss company called Question, uh, they also add uh, beeswax in order to make it uh, waterproof. And Dan, let's now go to Japan, where a company is making textiles with synthesized proteins. What's that all about? Well, yes, uh, Spiber, the company, it calls it brood protein, uh, which means it's a material that is derived from, or rather during the fermentation or brewing process of plant-based biomass. Now, this particular protein can be processed into different forms, so you can have different characteristics of the fabric that is produced. And interestingly, the company has also created synthetic spider silk, which is made from a synthetic protein called fibroin. Let's now talk about an interesting technology that is helping maintain constant garment temperature. Well, yes, it's called 37.5 technology, and as the name indicates, it's about maintaining an ideal core temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius uh, on the clothes that you wear. Now, this is done by adding uh, volcanic or other active materials of uh, volcanic sand into the fabric. And these materials, they have unique properties because they have many, many, many pores. And these pores, uh, they first of all absorb the infrared light that is emitted by the body. And that essentially is their power unit. So when uh, the body is hot and it's sweating, before the sweat turns into liquid, the vapors get, get absorbed by this material. And when the body is cool, uh, this particular material, because of the infrared light, it 
elevates the body temperature and keeps it constant at 37.5 degrees. Thank you very much, Dan and Jay Kettlecar there. Now, the fashion world is not the only industry trying to reinvent itself and push the frontiers of innovation. The jewelry sector is also becoming disruptive as new generations fall out of love with mined diamonds, mainly because of the environmental and human impact of extraction. A new alternative is actually emerging, lab-made diamonds, an innovation that has already won over Meghan Markle and many other celebrities. Well, to actually speak more about it, I'm joined by Jessica Warsh, the co-founder of Kimai. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. So you come from a family that was in the traditional business of mined diamonds. So why did you decide to break away from it and develop your own lab-grown solution? So the fine jewelry industry is a very traditional and intimidating industry that hasn't seen any innovation or any changes over the year and hasn't adapted to the change in wants and needs of our generation. Becoming personally more and more aware of the impact we have on the planet and on the people living on it, and therefore as well more conscious of our purchasing decision, coming to diamonds and the fine jewelry, we realized that there was no transparency at all. It was impossible to know where the diamonds we were buying were coming from. And we made it our mission to really bring that transparency to the industry and so those diamonds as our best solution. Now, Jessica, more precisely, how does it work and how do you create diamonds from scratch? And is it in identical to mine diamonds? So a, a lab grown diamond is identical to a mine diamond, chemically and physically. Basically, we're able to reproduce the mining environment in a lab in order to grow diamond in the exact same way as they would under earth, but in more controlled environments. So a diamond is a carbon. So by putting a carbon seed into a high pressure and high temperature environment, we're able to grow those diamond in just a few weeks without the social and environmental impact of mining. Um, it's impossible to tell them apart. No one can, can say the difference between a lab grown diamond and a mine diamond. You really need like a very special machine uh, in order to tell them apart. And even the FTC has changed the definition of a diamond by taking the word natural out of it, really to show that nowadays a lab grown diamond is a diamond. Now, you were just touching up on the environmental impact. Some actually argue that these lab-grown diamonds have quite an important carbon footprint uh, because of the amount of energy that's required to produce it. What do you respond to that? So uh, at Kimai, we mostly try to work with labs that use renewable, renewable energy. And it's also important to know that the amount of energy used to create those lab grown diamonds is not comparable to the amount of energy needed to mine diamonds. We need to dig uh, deeper under earth in order to find less than one carat rough diamond nowadays, leaving uh, enormous holes on our planet. Moreover, the social impact of mining has known many controversies from blood diamond to child labor. And with those lab grown diamonds, we're able to drastically reduce the environmental impact and bring an end to the, social, to the negative social impact. Jessica Warsh, the co-founder of Kimei, thank you very much indeed for that. And we're actually going back to you, Dan and Jay Cattlecard. These diamonds, these lab grown diamonds are also being used to create very small sensors. Well, yes, these diamond sensors, they uh, use a unique property called the nitrogen vacancy centers. So normally diamond is made of carbon atoms, but in this case, one carbon atom is replaced by a nitrogen atom. And this combination lends uh, these um, diamond sensors a unique property uh, in a sense that they are able to detect magnetic fields at nanometric scales, making them ideal for applications in medicine and electronics. Thank you. We're going to move on now to test 24. Now, this test is for those of you who feel nostalgic of the Polaroid era. The U.S. corporation is indeed making a comeback with a tech twist this time, a desktop darkroom called Polaroid Lab, Dan. Well, it works by projecting the image from your phone onto the lens, and this lens then projects the image on the print, which I've already inserted. So here I went to the Retromobile show last week, and I've taken some pictures of cars, and this is how it works. So through the app, it's a dedicated app for the Polaroid Lab. So all you have to do is just put your phone on this. Wait for it to get warmed up and you press this button. And you have your And then it comes out. Print. Absolutely. 
And you have to wait for 15 minutes uh, for it to develop completely. But I already did one here. And as you mentioned, it, there's a bit of a nostalgia involved because you have this analog uh, Polaroid pictures taken uh, of, your, of your personal photos. And there's an interesting element to it. So in the application, uh, there's an option of uh, viewing this photo in AR, that is augmented reality. Uh, so when you take a photo, there's an option of also taking a video. And here, as you can see, you see a video. And it's, that, make, it's making a small video absolutely. out of the photo. Yeah, absolutely. So this is an interesting feature. So you have photos, videos. This can be a good uh, um, souvenir. So for example, if you have friends of, uh, photos of friends and family, you can just put it on your refrigerator. And with the app, you can just watch the video and have a bit of a laugh, I guess. And so, yeah, and it costs uh, 130 euros. Very well. Thank you very much indeed for that, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24, but you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.